Welcome back to Steps of Freedom. This is, yay, this is our last Tuesday of the year, 2022. Can't believe I've been doing this almost every week since March. We're going to start again uh, January 10th, Tuesday night at 6.30. We'll be going through the miracle list. We'll start with um, number one and we'll track all the way through. Those classes also will be recorded. Hopefully I'll do something different. I don't know, it's the same topic, but I'll do something different to make it more interesting. But we always do a little bit of teaching and then we break up into small groups and have a discussion, prayer, and, some, and oftentimes deliverance. Tonight, though, is going to be a little different. Um, we have a guest speaker who's also an artist, as you can see behind me. And we're talking about tongues. We're talking about the gift of tongues and tongues as a heavenly language. Um, <clears throat> I believe uh, tongues is on the miracle list. I forget what number, but it's on there. And it's very, very important that you develop your gift of tongues so that you can edify yourself. And if you're strong spiritually, then you can be strong for others. And the Spirit of God will flow through you um, more often, I have found. So I started speaking in tongues every single day uh, almost two and a half years ago. And it has been, it's made such a difference. It's made really all the difference in my deliverance process and healing. So I'm so encouraged by all of you coming out um, to be with us tonight. We're thinking, oh, if no one comes, it's okay. We're at least got the, the streamers online and they'll benefit. So without further ado, I won't give away what exactly we're going to talk about. You all got a handout. Um, I'd like to welcome my good friend, Joe. He, um, I like to say if someone is having trouble with their tongues, I always look for Joe. I say, okay, Joe, he, he teaches how to get your gift of tongues. He walks you through. He's very patient. And so I asked him, I wanted to do this topic about tongues. I asked him if he would come. He's all the way from Tucson and he agreed to come here and talk about it with us tonight. So let's give him a little applause. Thank you for coming, Joe. All right. Um, keep it on track. Mm -hmm. oh. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to start off in prayer. Heavenly Father, um, we just want to thank you for the gathering of the saints here and those watching online and in future broadcasts. We come before you in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for blessing us with all the spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you anoint our ears and our eyes that we may be all receptive to one another. I don't know exactly what you have planned for this evening. But I pray that I speak only what you want me to share and refrain from saying anything you don't want me to say. pray that this message be useful and practical and not about just obtaining more knowledge, but that we may all receive something, including myself, that we may be more effective in your kingdom, expanding your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. So, uh, I only just um, prepared. <laughs> I, I don't even know if, if, if I had a month to prepare for this, if I could really prepare for it. Because um, it would probably be too natural 
not supernatural. So uh, I'm pretty much just, I don't really have a form. Um, <laughs> we just came up with this last night. So um, so how much time, did Julie take off already? All right. So. Um, I'm not standing here as an expert on tongues. Um, and all I could do is share my understanding of it. So if anything I say doesn't uh, gel with what you understand, all I'm up here to do is try to clarify some things. And hopefully um, encourage you to use your, your gift of tongues more frequently. And if you don't have the gift of tongues to receive it or release it, um, I'm still working out some of the, the complexities of this. Um, Mike did a, Brother Mike did a teaching um, on Glossa, uh, I think back in 2016. Um, it was one of the last messages he gave before he um, uh, before they moved from the healing house of healing to this building here. So, uh, first of all, I want to thank you guys on such short notice for showing up. So, Erica, Erica, Renju, Diana, and I know your faces. I don't recall your names. You on this? Um, so, I understand. Um, when I try to explain to people the gift of tongues, um, it, it's kind of like when I f was first introduced to it, um, I didn't know anything about it. I, I, I got it when I first met Mike in uh, November 10th, like 2018. And so I, I just used it because he told me to because I was so desperate. I was like, I didn't know anything, hardly anything about self-deliverance or anything like that. So I just, I didn't really do self-deliverance. I just prayed in tongues. And in fact, um, we have this handout, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, um, Glossa, your, your supernatural prayer language. And when I was doing deliverance, I would, if I, if I felt like I wasn't, I wanted everybody to leave with something, either uh, healing, deliverance, um, the miracle list. And if they didn't speak in tongues, I, I wanted them to, to go through this handout. And um, Mike encouraged me to use um, Glossa when I read the Bible, use Glossa to pray. Um, he didn't really give me a whole rigid formula on what to use, so I kind of just muddled through it. Um, I, by the way, how many of you speak in tongues or pray, can pray in tongues? So you do. How many don't? Just to make sure. How many do not? You, you don't? I'm learning. You're learning? I did today the first time. Oh, great. Great. Super. All right, so you speak in tongues? Yeah, I'm learning. You're learning? Okay. So, um, so my understanding is when you, when you read 1 Corinthians 14, it goes through diff the different varieties of tongues. It tries to break it down. And even when Mike went through it, how, how many of you have gone through his YouTube video on Glossa? Do you know that he has a YouTube video on Glossa? You have? Okay. So um, that helped me be more encouraged to use it. But I, even after listening to it, it's still kind of um, hard to take what he said there and relay it to others when I'm, I've only got maybe uh, 30 seconds to a couple minutes to explain it to people on, on deliverance, um, on the altar calls. So my understanding is that there are two categories of tongues, public and private. And public has 
the way I understand it, it has two forms. Um, one form, and by the way, probably half what I know is based on um, like stuff I've read or witnessed, learned about from others. So I have not experienced all that I'm, I am hoping to share with you. So um, I understand in the public realm or the public uh, category of speaking in tongues, you, you may speak in the church and somebody will, will understand it. It, it'll usually be somebody that's um, having complications or problems or they're an unbeliever and it's an actual human language, but you don't you didn't learn it. So um, I might be speaking Spanish and I never never learned Spanish. I don't know exactly how that works if you're really speaking Spanish or if the Holy Spirit is operating in that person so they can hear and it builds up the person receiving it. It builds up their faith so that they, um, they know that God's interested in them. They, 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 they come to realize, okay, God's a personal God. He's not a group God. He cares about me. And the other kind, nobody understands it, and it requires an interpreter. So the only one that understands it is the Holy Spirit. So if I'm speaking in tongues and Julie's, interpreting, neither of us understand it except the Holy Ghost is interceding. I speak, Julie interprets, and she shares it with the group. The, the public form is to help others, to help the church or another, another person in the church. Um, now, I'm just going to focus on... Um, the private side, uh, which we share here. And that comes in three forms, as far as I know. That's speaking in tongues, or praying in the Spirit, singing in the Spirit, and war tongues. Um, okay, so... Incidentally, I just put these up here for reference. Don't feel like you need to write them down. Um, if you want to take a picture, that's fine. I got a lot of this from a couple of books written by Kenneth Hagen. And he, he, um, he spent a great deal of time going into um, how to use tongues, why they're not used, the objections to it, um, if you're interested, I could give you the, the name of the book. Actually, I could go ahead and do that now and just mention it. Um, let's see. So, one is Why Tongues? And the other is Tongues see if I could find the tongues beyond the upper room that one that book he uh, he goes to extreme detail on the whole episode from beginning to end um, from the uh, book of Acts yes tongues beyond what? it's called tongues beyond the upper room so I think it's tongues beyond the upper. Room. And I think you can get it on PDF for free. So just look for it and uh, that's, I don't know if I spelled his name right. Now, 
Now, just as a by the way, I will say that there's certain things that Kenneth Hagin teaches that I'm not totally in line with, but I'm willing to bet that there's nobody on earth that I'm not going to agree with completely, even in biblical terms. Nobody has perfect doctrine. In my, that's my opinion. Um, but he has some really good insights, and that's so I followed that. Now, um, so I'm going to go to, uh, hopefully I'll line up with this. So the first, um, so there's 10 reasons why uh, that I've discovered through reading and watching other people operate in other ministries, 10 reasons why we encourage the use of tongues. One, it's the initial sign of a believer. So if we go to, of course, you know, in Matthew um, 16, is it 17? It's actually right on my shirt, but it's Mark. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. See, that's why I put, it was a, I, that's the only reason I wore the shirt. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, cause I didn't bring notes. Um, with that, so Mark 17 is actually the part I want to get to. Um, Mark 16 verse 17. Um, I'll just go through the whole thing. Okay. And Jesus said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, and he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So the Lord, then after the Lord had spoken these, he received them up to heaven, and they sat, and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere the Lord with, working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. So one of the signs of a believer, the second sign is that follows is speaking in tongues. Okay, so it's an initial sign. It's also um, the second is found in these scriptures. Um, it's spiritual edification. It, um, it's to build up your spirit, man. So, I believe that my soul and my spirit are always at odds with one another. And so, we, tr we are in our sanctification process, even though our spirit man is perfect when we're born again. We are working to overcome the flesh. And one of the ways uh, Mike teaches actually is that if the spirit's strong, or if, if the soul is strong, then the spirit is weak. And if the spirit's strong, the soul is weak. Um, it's like a teeter-totter. So one way to build yourself up is by praying in tongues. Um, also, it's a remind. So the third is it's a reminder of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So there are times when, um, you know, I've doubted. I've gotten through some um, depressing situations. Things aren't going right, and early on, um, oh, even now, you know, you you start having, you know, is is, uh, you know, can I really believe what I'm reading in the Bible? You just start having doubts. You, you start listening to the news too much, and you start hearing things that contradict the Word of God, right? You're not capturing your thoughts. So um, you think, man, am I even saved? Was I ever saved? So that may not be your situation, but if you're ministering to others, that's when you have to encourage them. I would recommend you encourage them to start singing or, or praying in tongues. It's a reminder that the Holy Spirit is, is there. So the fourth is 
it's in line with God's perfect will. So um, I made this, this whole silly uh, picture is just, these pictures are just to kind of give you an idea. So one, speaking in tongues is the first sign. Um, two, um, what did I say two was? Spiritual edification, so it builds up your spirit, man. And three, it's a reminder. Four, when you pray in the spirit, I think we'll find scripture that supports this. Actually, it's not showing there. Um, better scripture, I think, is 1 Corinthians 14. All right. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit he speaks mysteries. But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. But he who prophesies edifies the church. So, apologize, I probably should go through all of these really quick and then go to scriptures. So four, it's perfect alignment with God. Um, this is just for visual purposes. We know that God dwells in us, right? And the Holy Spirit is everywhere, right? So it's just for, um, it's just a memory technique. All right, five is it stimulates your faith. Six, it's, it establishes a hedge of protection when you're in situations, when you're out in the world. You're hearing, you go into Target, they're playing mm -hmm. music you don't want to listen to. You could just whisper. Seven is, it has been known for people, I've read quite a few, um, stories throughout this past century where people have prayed, not knowing why they're praying in tongues, but they feel compelled to get on their knees and start praying for someone. And sometimes they can see who they're praying for. They have a vision. Seven, the seventh reason is praying for the unknown. So you could be praying for somebody that's on another continent. You could pray for somebody that you you just briefly met, and people have gone through confirming, you know, when they prayed and when some horrible tragedy was prevented. Like, it's, you know it's a miracle. Somebody must have been praying for them. And um, so nine, it's the, way, it's, a, it's the way to give thanks to God. And, sorry. Nine and ten. It's uh, it's a way of subjecting the tongue. So let me just see if I can't organize my notes here. Tablets. Okay. All right. Mark 16, 17, and these signs shall follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. That's the first sign. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 18, I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. So it's evident that Paul put a lot of um, emphasis on speaking in tongues. 
Let's see, where are we at? Acts 2.4 and 1046. All right, Acts 2.4, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with tongues, with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Um, Acts 10.46, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Okay, this is not cooperating here. Um, okay, First Corinthians fourteen fourteen. So I already went through that. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. First Corinthians fourteen twelve. Even so you, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel. Therefore, let him who, who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will also pray with the with the understanding. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will also s sing with the understanding. Um, okay, let me go back to this. So in um, are we at First John, First John fourteen sixteen, a reminder of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit before. Jesus says, uh, verse fourteen, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be with you. So, I'm not sure if I should dwell in this area, but... I was just reading earlier this morning that there's a confusion, there's a lot of confusion about when you get baptized um, by the Holy Spirit and who the Holy Spirit's for, who, um, who speaks in tongues, who doesn't speak in tongues. So I was reading that, a reminder to me, that Jesus... Um, so there's like the way I understand it there's three baptisms okay um, Jesus was in a sense baptized three times I'm, I'm losing, using that term baptism roughly in Hebrews, Hebrews it talks about there's many baptisms so Jesus came to John the Baptist and he was baptized in the water of repentance, even though he had no sin. He was baptized to fulfill all righteousness. At that moment, he also was baptized with the Holy Spirit. He received the Holy Spirit. All right. He was tested for 40 days, and it wasn't after he was tested 
and overcame the devil, that he was baptized with power. So there's baptism of um, the baptism of repentance, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and the baptism of power. So I think that um, that kind of follows along the lines with the, with the apostles. They spent many years with Jesus, so they were being washed, but they, they learned who Jesus was. It took them a while to realize, okay, he's not just a prophet, he's God. And so they got a, a newborn experience. It doesn't really talk about the apostles water, being water baptized. I don't know, maybe they were baptized when they were following John the Baptist before Jesus came along. But they, I believe they were, they were already baptized with the water of repentance. It is in, uh, I'm going off stray from this because I feel there's, I feel kind of flat <laughs> just going through these scriptures like this. Um, I'm trying to find if it's in, um, where Jesus actually said before, after he was crucified, raised from the dead, he visited the, the apostles. And he, he went, he told them, receive the, the Holy Ghost. I'm trying to find the scripture. I apologize. Um, that I'm not, I don't have it at hand right now. Let's see if it's not here. John 20, 22. Okay. John 20. Okay, thank you. All right, I'll go through, I'll start at verse 9, 19. John 20, 19. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them, Again, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Ghost. Now, I was listening to Derek Prince, who's an expert at Greek studies and the translation of, of Greek words, and he was explaining that in the original Greek, the word that's used for breathing is like you would breathe into a flute, so or like in an instrument, musical instrument. So I'm, I'm seeing that Jesus, if these were instruments, he's not breathing in all of them at once. I've heard, he, that's not the first time I've heard this, where he actually went to each one of the apostles, receive ye the Holy Ghost, receive ye the Holy Ghost. So, it's, interesting. it's not until um, it the book, yeah, yeah, I didn't think of it that way, but um, it's not until um, the book of Acts where Jesus um, commands them to wait for me until you receive power. So, let me go to... I think it's um, I think it's in the book of Acts one, one, one four and one eight okay all right and beans let's see is this it and okay Acts one four and being assembled together with them Jesus commanded them 
not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he had said, You have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And Jesus said, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power. Now, since I've been studying uh, under Mike, I have a tendency to look up every time I see power because so many times it means authority. And sometimes it means power. So there's a tr mistranslation, but I look it up in King James and it actually... Um, oops, messed that up. Okay, it actually... but you shall receive power, um, which comes from dunamis. So there's exosia, which means authority, and dunamis, which means power. So we have, with regard to casting out demons, we have authority, but with regard to the gifts of the Spirit, we operate in power. Okay. What does exosia mean? So exosia is, is the Greek word which is translated into authority. And the reason I bring that up is because many times the King James translates it into power. It's a mistranslation. And sometimes I think they do the opposite with, uh, with dunamis. They translate it into authority. But I like to look it up just to make sure, just for clarification. Um, okay. Oops, my tablet's not working here. Okay, I'm going to pause right here for a second. Do you guys, do you have anything that you want me to address more? Would you like me to go into the scriptures or would you like to go more into? Any questions? Yeah, like any questions that might. Is no. maybe, uh, maybe for me, just so I understand, because tongues has always been, I don't know, it's just nobody seems to want to talk about it. Um, but I'm, I'm just really curious about the, the difference between the public and the personal. Like, um, what would be, are there examples scripturally where it was public? And then, are there any examples personal? I mean, I know that there are some public examples. Are there personal examples in scripture? So, the, Mike spent a whole, <laughs> a whole um, teaching on it. And... I'm not sure why he didn't do it again, but I know that he was re reluctant to do the first one. It is a very controversial subject, yeah, right. and I think that I, I believe a lot of denominations exist because they fight over tongues. No, you're not supposed to speak in tongues in church, or you're not supposed to speak in tongues unless there's some kind of order. Um, there's, It's only for... For self, it's only for the first signs. You show it, and that's it. You never use it again. Some think, say um, not everybody has it. And so that's we. That's how I was. Brought, that's how I was taught. Right. So it's okay. So yeah, I guess I didn't clarify that well. So a lot of people confuse public tongues with private. So they think um, you speak in tongues you always have to have an interpreter. Oh, okay. But that's public. That's for public. Private tongues is when you're by yourself. You. Now, you could be in a group and do it. And if I go into... Um, do my best to... Um, let me go... 
go into 1 Corinthians 14. Actually, I'm going to go into 1 Corinthians 12, where it first addresses it. Um, I'm just going to start from the beginning. 1 Corinthians 12. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away with these dumb idols. Let me go. I'm going to use uh, KJ3, actually, because it actually... You know that, that when you were nations, how you were led being carried away to voiceless idols. Because of this, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus is a curse, and no one is able to say Jesus is Lord if not by the Holy Spirit. And there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of ministries, yet the same Lord. And there are varieties of workings, but the same is but the same is God, the one working all things in all. And to each one is given the showing forth of the Spirit to the profiting of each one. For through the Spirit is given one a word of wisdom, to another a word of knowledge, according to the same Spirit, and to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, and to another workings of power and to another prophecy, and to another discerning of spirits, and to another kinds of languages, and to another interpretation of languages. In the New King James Version, it says, different kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. So, there's actually another scripture um, where Paul asks, says, you know, do all have this gift? Do all have that gift? Do all speak in tongues? The implication is, the obvious answer is no. So then people use that and say, see, not everybody speaks in tongues. So it gets confusing because he's talking about public speaking in tongues in front of a whole group where there's a translator or somebody Somebody, it's specific to some person in that group. But if you go to 1 Corinthians 14, it contradicts that objection because it says, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. Then in verse 4 it says, He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. Therefore, it's not to be translated because it's not meant to edify the church. It doesn't say it, he edifies the church. It says he edifies himself. So when, you, when I read this, because I don't, I don't know Greek, I have to learn by experience, trial and error. Honestly, for the longest time, the first year, um, I was on and off speaking in tongues just because I trusted Mike's fruit. And he told me to do it, so I did it. But there's always, I think, I think the most, I've heard this over and over again, the most obvious thing that you hear in your mind, but it's really the enemy, is you're just making noise. Yeah. You're not really speaking to God. Because people think that if they're doing anything supernaturally, they're going to feel it. But your feelings are not in your spirit man. As far as everything I learned, your, fe your spirit man does not have feelings. Your soul has feelings. Now your spirit man can engage with your soul and cause you to feel, you know, weeping, crying, sadness. You don't know. So there's times when I start weeping and crying and I don't know why I'm praying for someone. And I'm like, I'm not even sad. Why am I crying? Or you start feeling joy, you know, supernatural joy. And why? Nothing in your life has changed for the better. You still owe that money. You still, so-and-so is still mad at you. Uh, you, you why, why am I feeling light? You know, you, you're speaking in tongues. And so, um, yeah, so the, the scriptures, 
that I kind of try to key in on over and over is 1 Corinthians 14, 1 through 4 and 12 through 15. 1 Corinthians 14, 1, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him, not even himself. And not even the interpreter. Right. And so that speaking, that kind of tongues is private. It's not meant to be interpreted. And that's where it gets confusing. Because you think, well, how come he gets, so only the people that gift, have the gift of tongues, I guess that's where it gets confusing. So the gift of tongues for self-edification is something you have when you're baptized. Mm -hmm. You don't learn it. People try to learn to speak in tongues. You don't, the way I've been taught, you don't learn it. You release it. You already have the full vocabulary within your spirit, man. Mm -hmm. The gift of speaking, like we talk about the nine gifts, and one of them is uh, speaking in tongues and interpretation in tongues. Those are the public ones. But to us, they may sound the same because they sound like a foreign language. Mm -hmm. And every time I hear a foreign language, it's sounds kind of funny to me. It's like, are they even speaking a language or they're just moving, you know, but it is a language. And so he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. Even so you, verse 12, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel. Therefore, let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. So you can speak tongues and pray to God that you can interpret your own tongues for yourself. Um, when I'm praying in a tongue, I might be thinking of somebody I'm praying for. It might be even myself. And I know that it's, it's the perfect prayer. It may not be praying exactly what I want. Um, I might be praying, Lord, I, uh, I don't know how I'm going to pay this bill. And I'm praying in tongues. And then maybe the whole, for all I know, the Holy Spirit's saying, Lord, give him the grace to just <laughs> accept he's going to be taken care of. He's not going to get that money. The bill's going to go away or something, right? I don't know what I'm praying. I just know it's perfect, which, which kind of brings us to faith. You have to have faith to speak in, in tongues because your soul's always receiving what the enemy is saying. And you're like thinking, what? Is this a waste of time? I could have been reading the Bible for an hour instead of praying in tongues for an hour. I could have been making money to pay that bill. I could have, you know. So you're, you're, it takes faith to speak in tongues. Um, so how much time do we have? Are we out? Well, oh, it's 7.30. It's good for you to um, finish up the 10 reasons and then you okay. go into... So, well, I went through the 10, oh, you did all but that. I don't know if it's... Actually, I went... This eight is for recharging. Um, there's times when um, when I personally have felt physically tired, physically exhausted, mentally exhausted, emotionally exhausted, and I'll pray in tongues. Um, Hoping God, you know, praying that this, whatever my problem is, I, I'll find a solution. You know, I'm, that's my way of praying with the understanding. I'm, I'm thinking about what I'm, what I want the Lord to do. And I might go, I might pray and I might go into singing. And I'll actually start feeling lighter and I'll start feeling like I, like I just got refreshed. Like I just got sleep somehow. Um, it doesn't always happen, 
but I have experienced that. And there's no, ex I can't come up with an explanation why, other than it's supernatural refreshing. It's a way to recharge. Um, yes. I want to say, personally, I don't know if anybody experiences this, but when I'm praying in tongues, sometimes I experience deliverance. I, I didn't. Just yeah. From nowhere and yeah. I'll be like, what's going on? Do other people pass through this? <laughs> yeah. I think my spirit man overtakes, and like you said, you feel something break yeah. off. Experience early on. I'm glad you brought that up. I wasn't going to bring that up, <laughs> but I will confess that uh, my first year, um, uh, since I met Mike, I would I would pray. I didn't know about you know how to cast out specific names or symptoms, and I would do what I could, but then I'd pray in tongues. And after a few minutes, it wouldn't, you know, I would never time it. I would just, I wouldn't even know why it's happening. I'd start coughing or I'd start like, uh, like dry heaves and stuff. And, um, and I would say, you know, yeah, I would ask about it and I would tell people, I think I'm getting delivered while I'm doing tongues, but I'm not calling the spirits out. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's. So you're not alone in that. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't have scripture to back it up. It yeah, so um, it actually, in 1 Corinthians 14, 21, it actually references uh, it's not a good reference there. It actually references Isaiah 28.11 and Deuteronomy 28.49. I have a cross-reference. But Paul actually says, It is written in the law, With men of other tongues and other lips, I will speak to this people, and yet for all that they will not hear me. Therefore, tongues are for a sign. This is where it gets confusing. Therefore, tongues are for a sign, not to those who believe, but to unbelievers, but prophesying is not for unbelievers, but to those who believe. So, <clears throat> for the longest time, I just spoke in tongues, not because I had solid scriptural evidence that I could debate somebody else with, you know, and, and just say, well, no, it is legitimate. I was doing it because I trusted Mike's fruit and I trusted others that used it. I, I heard it's basically ex experience. experience. Um, and so I guess I would say that people that are against tongues that say there's no scripture for it, I always forget to come back with the, there's no scripture against it. People, people like say there's no, there's no, there's no scripture that we should do this. Well, there's no scripture we shouldn't. There's the, the whole Bible is like Mike says, it's like the tip of an iceberg. And we don't, we don't see, I think we should always go to the Word of God to make sure that we're aligned with the Word of God. But, um, I mean, if you, if you need to overcome that, I mean, there's plenty of scriptures. When I read it, it really explained a lot. When I, I got all these scriptures from um, that book, and actually mostly this book here. Um, okay, I'm going to go through these real quick. I'll try to, okay. Um, John 14, 16, 17. And I will pray the Father, and He will give you another helper. Um, Romans 8, 26, 27. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit Himself makes intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now He who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because He makes intercessions for the saints 
according to the will of God. So that's four. So it's the perfect will of God. You don't know. I don't know exactly what I'm praying, but I know that when I pray, it always gets answered. Jude one uh, twenty. But you, beloved, build yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. So when it's the Bible says praying in the Spirit, praying in the Holy Spirit, it means praying in tongues. So Jude 5, um, actually that was, yeah, building up your faith. So... Um, I'm just going to move on. So 1 Corinthians 14, 27, 28. If anyone speaks in a tongue, let there be two or at the most three, each in turn, and let one interpret. But if there is no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church. Let him speak to himself and to God. So right there, it talks about, he's not saying don't, don't speak in tongues. He's just saying don't do it in the church because you need an interpreter. Is that clear? Is that kind of muddled? No, I get it. Is that, okay. Ephesians 6.18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. So actually, I think this is the one I added myself because when... I read in the book about praying in um, praying for people and not knowing what their problem is. You don't know what their needs are. You're just praying. And you know that your prayer is answered. You don't exactly know why. But sometimes you'll feel a compulsion. Now, I've not, I don't recall personally going through this, but there was, there's a lot, he did a lot of writing in it, but there was no scripture. And so I thought the closest scripture for that is this one. When you're praying for peop other people in the ministry, you don't always know what their needs are. You know in general somebody's sick, somebody's in the hospital. And I'm reluctant to pray in English or any other language I know. I pray in the Spirit knowing that it's going get, to get answered because I don't know what they need, but, the, but God does. Father God knows. And the Holy Spirit knows. Um, Isaiah 28, 11, 12. For with stammering lips and other tongues, he will speak to this people. To whom he said, this is the rest with which you will cause the, rear, the weary to rest. This is the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. They would not hear. So it's refreshing to those that use it. That would be, is that this one? Are we on eight now? Yeah. So it's refreshing. Um, but he predicted in Isaiah that people would have a problem. That's how I read it. Yet they would not hear. They would not. It's like they're going to have a problem with tongues. People are going to be against it, even though I'm giving this gift to them. Um, okay, I already went through 1 Corinthians 14. What is the conclusion then? James. All right, so the other, the other um, reason to use tongues is it controls the tongue. James says, um, that's not popping up. For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able to bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and, with, and we turn their whole body. Look at the ships. Although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest 
a little fire kindles, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and earth of reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. With it, we bless our God and Father, and with it, we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives, or a grapevine bear figs? Thus no spring yields both salt water and fresh. So, that's the tenth reason. It's a way of subjecting the tongue. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. So what do you do when you come up when you meet somebody they get deliverance and then you want to help them speak in tongues? What um so like this sister right here, she came in today just and she started a little bit and mm -hmm. it's there, but her confidence isn't there. So I don't know, maybe you'd be open to going through because I know he goes through an exercise to try to, he calls it training the conference. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, and I heard Andrew Womack talk about it. I was watching years ago. I, I, he was talking about being baptized in the Spirit, and I just, I wanted to do it, but I, it was it was my own, you know, finding my own demons, so to speak, and I just, well, I felt stupid. And I, you know, I don't right. say that anymore because I don't perceive that, but I, because um, I'm not. But, like, tonight finally I had a breakthrough, and I just didn't let that spirit of perfection, I, it, you know, I'm not accepting that. So I just was able to just, it feels very baby-like. But that's what, I, I just remember Andrew Womack saying, said, just babble. It's okay. You have to just let it work. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I'm just saying, I'm just telling you what I've heard. That's And another lady sat with me years ago, and she sat there and just really tried to coach me. And I, I just couldn't, I just, I don't know what my problem was. But. I, have, I have an idea. Um, so I had, I had the same problem, and Brother Mike had me up at the front, and was like, you need to, you know, praise God, and, you know, he's walking me through, trying to get me, get me to speak in tongues, and not too much time passed, and he looked at me, and he was like, you know, people that are highly intelligent, and people that have low intelligence, both on either spectrum, have a very hard time speaking in tongues. He's like, are you analytical? And I'm like, over the top, right? I work in IT. I'm a problem solver. And this doesn't make sense to me because I want to know how you do it. Tell me how to do it and then I can follow the steps and I'll do it, but you're not telling me what to do. And he told me, your mind is not going to serve you here. You need to get rid of that. Yeah. So that's the first place to start is whatever you think. Yeah. You know, you're going to have to throw that out. And then you're just going to have to use what he said, mm -hmm. faith. Okay. And you just keep going. I had to really practice. It took like more than a month. And one day I just was upset at myself, right, being that kind of like perfectionist. And I said, I'm done with this. I'm going in my room. I'm shutting the door. And I'm not coming out until I get my gift of tongues. <laughs> and it only took about 15 minutes. But I had to give up. I had to like use my voice and then not care what it sounded like and go and when it started flowing I recognized that it wasn't me that it was supernatural yeah, yeah. 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 So, for the youtubers do you think you could walk us through the steps that you do okay so I don't really <laughs> I know it's hard to believe Julie Pretend but we <laughs> never spoke in touch before to teach us I I don't really <sighs> <laughs> I, I pe people think I have like this methodical way of doing it, but I don't. It's like it's a spontaneous, and it's it's tailored to the person. Mm -hmm. And I try different things. I guess I could go with what I've tried with different people, yeah. but um, 
Maybe I don't. No one would be willing to be. I don't know where it comes from. So, um, <laughs> does somebody? We all pretend to follow. All right. Let who who has who has like broken tongues? Okay. Would you? <laughs> What's totally would you would you would you mind coming up? Okay. All right. I'm pretty new at Jean too. All right. Yeah, yeah, this will be good. All right, go ahead. Alohim Ahuda Alohim. Okay, so what I hear is your your slurring, almost like um like your 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 tongue's too thick, like you just came from the dentist, right? Mm. So it doesn't matter. It's just, I'm just, that's how I know that it doesn't sound quite like a language. And what I usually found from Mike is it could be because you still have fear, you still have um, unforgiveness, either towards yourself or to, towards someone else. Um, however, you can use your tongues to help you develop that forgiveness to get over that fear and over time your tongues will as a cons it's like a recursive uh, formula while you use your tongues you'll get rid of whatever is blocking it and then your tongues will get unblocked and then it'll it just keeps they they feed each other right okay. because you're overcoming it by your own faith so what i say is repeat after me rosta rosta then esto now, did you see how you enunciated clearly, like it's a language? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I'm going to say the word. I want you to draw it out. I think we've done this exercise before. So when I say resto, I want you to say resto. Okay. Resto. Denesto. Denesto. Slow. Denesto. De Slower. Nesto. Good. Okay. Now I'm going to say it slow. I want you to fa say it fast. Anestero. Anestero. Coristi. Coristi. Okay. Now I want you to start speaking and I'm going to throw in a word and you repeat it and then you keep speaking. All right. I want you to start off with some that are clear. So go ahead and say say one. Keep even if you repeat it. I don't even care if you repeat it. Slow it down. Keep going. Denesto. 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 Christi. Christi. Christi Elioha um, Elio okay, re relax okay. relax mm -hmm. We're all, we all love you here okay mm -hmm. okay sir <laughs> keep going Eliahim Elohim <laughs> good Do, can you all hear that it's a lot clearer than when she first started so you just got to keep keep at it okay okay now let's try something else because sometimes this will break it up. Start singing. Close your eyes. Aduim Jalohim, Jalohim Elohim, Jesuva Elohim, Elioia. Good. Okay. Would you care to come up? You're probably going to break here, through here, it because... Your mind right here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Relax. All right. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Oh, just relax. I'm just praying for both of us. Good. All right. Lord Jesus. What's your name? I'm Jess. Jess. Heavenly Father, I'm here with your beloved daughter, Jess. And I perceive that she is too eager to try to please you because she has this misconception that you're not already pleased with her.
and just to prove that you're pleased with her, we're going to purposely make mistakes and sound as horrible as we possibly can, and you're still going to love her. Okay, go ahead. Say something impossibly, inconceivably impossible to understand. See, that's where I struggle. <laughs> okay. Okay, then struggle. I just feel pressure right now. Okay, repeat after me. Okay. Dishti. Dishti. I see, I didn't even say that, and you already said a different language. <laughs> <laughs> you already have your, okay. So you already, you already sounded good when I asked you to not sound good. <laughs> It's a perfectionist in me. I okay. <laughs> no, that was the Holy Ghost. I'm pretty okay, sure. Okay, good. Okay. Good. All right. It's God. Okay. Relax. Okay. <laughs> okay. Put your hands right here. Okay. Just relax. Okay. Repeat after me. Desto. Desto. Okay. I'm, I'm going to whisper. I want you to say it loud. Desto. Desto. Close your eyes. Ishti. Ishti. Prestiri. Prestiri. Now pick one of those and repeat it. Esso. Iri. Iri. Keep going. You could repeat one you already said. Esso. Keep saying it. Esso. Prestiri. Costa. Costa. Keep going. Elohim. There you go. Keep going. Don't try to perfect it. Try to mess it up. I dare you. I defy you. To. Rava. <laughs> <laughs> Astro. I want like a book. Okay, try try this. Try this. Repeat the vowels. Okay. Give me the vowels. Five vowels. Five vowels. A. A. Uh, English. Oh God. Or do it in Spanish. Yeah. Right. Um. A E I O U. Now. A. -A E I O U. Good. Okay. <laughs> now, add a consonant. Just pick anyone. What is a consonant? You gotta remind me. <laughs> okay. B. A B. Oh. Okay. Now this is really gonna be embarrassing. Okay. But go ahead and do it. Add B to each vowel. Just. Okay. Ab. <laughs> Ab. Eb. Oob. <laughs> okay, that's perfect because that's not what I wanted you to do, but okay, you okay. but you did something even better. Good. Uh, just keep doing it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta think what the vowels are. Okay. No, all right. That was just the the reason I do that is to throw off the spirits. Don't ask me why. I've done this and it and it works with some people. Okay. okay. All right. Let's close your eyes. Okay, start speaking. I'll throw in some that you can hear. Dishti. Dishti. Ero. Ero. Koshna. Koshna. Keep going. Elohim. Rava. Desto. Evo. Destro. Elena. No. Good. Okay, let's try something I've never tried before. Come here for a second. Um, I want five of you to come up here and spread around. What was your name again, Jess? Uh, okay. Let's do it. And just just start speaking. Okay. Five. That's one. Okay. Close your eyes and just pick out. A word from each of them. Okay. All right. Okay. So you're gonna have to close your eyes to focus. Okay. All right. Everybody, start speaking. 
オーラでステンドラとしてケットヘッドグルーンドラディネシャーラウダーシャーラウダーシャーラウダーシャーラウダーシャーラウダーシャーラウダーシャーラウダーシャーラウダーシャーラウダーシャーラウダーシャーラウダーシャーラウダーシャーラウダーシャーラウダーシャーラウダーシャーラウダーシャーラウダーシャーラウダーシャーラウダーシャーラウダーシャーラウダーシャーはい。Get mad. Rema. Go. Good. Elohim. You got it. Good. Abba. <clears throat> uh, Rama. Is Toro. Good. Vesti. Aratata. Oro. Te Maha. Good. Keep going. Every once in a while, I want you to say thank you, Jesus. Good. Thank you, Lord. Okay, now I want you to start singing. Okay, everybody start singing. Ora di Shira. Good. That's even better. Louder. Elohim, Rama, Torah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Good. Christy. You're doing excellent. Elohim. Thank you, Father Jesus. Torah, Ava, Mama. Be intentional. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you give me the words. Vashti, Posta, Elohim. Good. All right, let me show you something. So, I think I, I failed to mention the three forms. So, we have, thank you. Yeah, we're good. Thank you so much. Wait, one more thing. So, I want to show you. Okay. So, there's the three forms there's speaking, which I was showing you. Singing, which is when we're singing, is the highest form of worship. All right? That's more, better than using instruments. It's the highest form of worship. Prayer is you're speaking directly to God. Now, you were doing a little bit of war tongues. That's something that I learned here, but, and I didn't know, well, what's, you know, Does anybody else teach that? I actually listened to Derek Prince talk about that, and he's addressing Have you ever noticed that when you're speaking in tongues, you get kind of an anger, angry flare to you? And it just comes out like anger. So that's, I was like, well, that's war. Actually, I think he, he, he gave it a name that implies war or battle tongues or something like that. So, so that's. That might be what you want to use. But when you, so I've noticed with you, you speak more clearly when you're singing. Okay. And, and I've noticed that with some people, they speak 
their singing isn't as good, it's not as clear okay. as when they're speaking. Okay. So now I think when you go home, you're gonna, it's gonna be easier for you because you did all that in front of the audience and in front of that camera. <laughs> You're gonna do great when you get home. Okay. I sing in my truck a lot, which is so ridiculous. But. So we encourage people to speak in tongues half an hour a day. Start off with 30 seconds a day, 30 seconds nonstop until you can build it up to five minutes, 15 minutes. And then you'll find you will have time. Most people have enough time while they're driving to speak in tongues. And you're, again, you're, the main reason is you're building yourself up. Have you, you have one of these flyers? Mm -mm. Okay, that's, yeah. So that kind of encourages you. So um, I try to read the Bible speaking in tongues, at least early on, that's what I did. Um, whenever I come up with an idea that it seems like a revelation or something that I want to work on, I realize there, um, something I want God to address. I want Him to magnify this in my life. I'll, I'll pray in tongues that it, it go into my spirit, man. See, so, anyway. Yes? I was going to say, when I, um, I got my tongues by the bedside, just asking the Lord and receiving it. But one of the two things that I struggled with, number one, is that I was making it up. Number two was that it doesn't work. Hmm. So later on in life, when I hit a hard spot, I started to reactivate it. Those are the two lies the enemy comes at with it. The only way you would know it works is if you use it. Okay. So that is an activation of your faith. The more you practice it and, and speak it, then you, re you, you will see it works. And so the enemy was telling, Satan was telling you that you were making it up. That right. Yeah. He, he, he stops you by saying you're making it up, number one. And number two, it doesn't work. But the only way you can defeat those lies is by, by practicing it. Yeah. Okay. And the more you practice it, you defeat those lies, you, and you realize they were, that, that's deception, they're lying to you. So the more you ex practice it, you are actually stretching out your faith. Mm -hmm. Because it takes faith to actually speak it because you don't understand it. Yeah. So one of the things I kick-started with tongues was getting really mad with those demons that stole in my life. Well, you'll recognize things that happened in your life, and you'll see that they came to steal, kill, and destroy. Yeah. And you're like, you've been fighting all this time with your husband or your children or your family. You've been fighting with the wrong people. It's been causing more damage than, you know, help. Yeah. But when you recognize that it's not the people you're fighting, it's the yeah. spirits behind the people, yes. you start taking war and you get mad. Mm -hmm. So when I started umping my madness and my hate towards what came at me all these years to destroy, I got a little bit more ump to the tongues, like he said, war, war tongues. And that took me to another level of fight and faith okay but it takes faith to experience that to stretch that out and to say lord i believe your word are not warring against flesh and blood but against powers and wickedness in high places and i'm going Amen. to take it by the horn yes i'm going to war yes and then you stretch out your faith little by little and you begin the lord will, the holy spirit will show you that it's working mm -hmm. Things will start falling off of you or in your atmosphere, and you build that faith in it. And then the more you use it, the more you have faith in it. Okay, yeah. And then the other scripture he was saying, pray without ceasing. Personally, I don't think pray without ceasing is possible with your mind, with, with English. But right. if you pray in tongues, you can actually pray without ceasing. Because you're always saying it under your breath. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I make it a... It's, I do that sometimes at work or wherever. People mm -hmm. don't know I'm praying in tongues. I'm just speaking under my breath. Yeah. So you can pray without ceasing in tongues. But in English, I'm sure you will cease. Because your mind cannot cons constantly just go over you know, prayer. So I'm sorry. No, that was excellent. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Renju. So also, also um, 
you could sit down if you if you want to. Um, so I found, uh, for me personally, other times I've used tongues is if I have a negative thought, and I don't exactly know how to capture. I'm like I don't have a scripture to kick it out. You know, I just I'll just start speaking in tongues. Now if I'm at work or something, I'll just. So nobody hears, right? Um, yes? I just want to say something really fast. I noticed that um, I actually tried to look up some of the things that I said, and sometimes they are actually words. Like, mm -hmm. I noticed that she said two words, Abba and Elohim. And Elohim is the name of God, and Abba is Father, I think, right? Right. So there's something to build your faith. Right, right. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, I've heard that before. I, I've said I've said words, and uh, um, one of my prayer partners would look that word up, and it's a word I've never heard of. It's like an Indian word yeah. that, <laughs> and so it's like okay. <laughs> but anyway, and the, and the other way I'll use tongues um, if you have trouble sleeping. I remember one time I just tossing and turning. I could not, I could not go to sleep for hours. And I'm like, okay, that's it. I'm going to not sleep anyway. I might as well speak in tongues. And within like 15 minutes, I just, I was on my knees praying in tongues. I just, I didn't even know I fell asleep, right? Why? Probably because the enemy's tired. He's like, well, I'd rather you go to sleep than have to listen to that, <laughs> right? I don't know. He doesn't want us to speak well, in tongues because he can't. Teaching right. I have so. a small testimony I have to share, and then maybe we'll conclude. Okay. Um, I was watch, listening to John Ramirez, I believe it was John Ramirez, and he was telling about, ah, maybe it was not him, I don't know, I think it was. Anyway, the guy, the, he was a minister, and he was saying that he was, in, he was talking to a former witch, and she was saying um, how in her neighborhood, you know, there are, um, the Christians, they, they have a flame of fire. I know we knew in the spirit world who the Christians were because they had a flame of fire. And he goes, and then there was another type of Christian um, who spoke in a funny language. And he said, oh, do they have the flame of fire? He's like, not a flame of fire. Their whole body was on fire. Wow. Mm. And we, uh, we, we couldn't stand to be around them. That would be hedge of protection, kind of. Yeah. Right. be a flame of fire. So when... I notice when we speak in tongues or war tongues and I pray for somebody, the spirits do react. Yes. Yeah. Um, they don't like it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So when we're doing deliverance, a lot of times we'll speak in tongues, maybe trying to stimulate or usher in, usher a word of knowledge. Yeah. Or sometimes it's just we're speaking in tongues during deliverance. Casting out devils. We don't know the name of it, but the Holy Ghost does. So that helps. Well, I could tell you one experience that might help you too on that same note. Um, I was still in my deliverance journey. Still am, but not as heavily oppressed as I was. And one of the spirits wouldn't leave. And it could still manifest and put me in like a trance and I would be you know, crawling around, slithering around like a snake on the ground. Very cute, not really. Um, and this one night, uh, one of the ministry team was trying to help me. You know, he's casting out. It started manifesting. I was on the floor, and another uh, another person here came behind me and started singing in tongues. I could feel the spirit inside of me get enraged and grabbed a bucket in front of me and threw, chucked it across the room because it hated, I recognized that it hated the tongues, but mm -hmm. I could feel it manifest the rage from the tongues specifically. Mm -hmm. Started crawling away from her. Mm -hmm. That's when I recognized how powerful singing in tongues was. Wow. Yeah. Wow. They hate it. Yeah. I know, I know that personally when I go through a, an episode of, for whatever reason, depression, um, that I'll start singing in tongues. And, and I'll, I'll, 
when you're when you're in these certain situations you just know because you've been told to do it or it's worked in the past but sometimes it's like did it ever work or have I always been depressed? I think I've always been depressed. I've never had a hat. It's like a, a blind veil is over your mind. And so you, um, at least that's been my experience. And so I'll just start speaking or seeing, I'll start singing in tongues, even though I don't want to. And I've heard it say, I can't remember where, which scripture it is. It talks about praise as a sacrifice. When we think of sacrifice as something you're giving, you don't want to give it, but it's, it's not an offering, it's a sacrifice. So sometimes praising is a sacrifice. And when you're singing in tongues and you, you're tired, you don't want to, maybe especially if you have, maybe you're sick, maybe you have the flu, COVID, something, and you start praising, you know, I don't, it doesn't matter what, um, what I'm going through, God is still on his throne. Christ, Jesus Christ is at his right hand. The battle is fixed. The war is won. And you're just praising even though you don't feel like it. You're tired. You just do it. And you start feeling like, I've, I've felt like the oppression kind of go away and start feeling hopeful just doing that. So, Okay. All right. Um, all right, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the cooperation of everybody here, the, the questions and, the, ans and the, um, the answers that we just all cooperated. And uh, I pray that, um, again, if I said anything that was not from you, that you did not want me to say, I pray it just be forgotten. If there's anything that you want to magnify, I pray you bless it. I pray you bless all the ministers here, all the people that came here this evening, those watching online and in future broadcasts. Um, bless their families. Bless their relationship with their families, with you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.